Okay, I'm in the studio now, joined by Jim and Matt. We're going to have a little chat about social media. They've kindly come down to we're going to have a bit of a laugh, see what, what comes up. We're going to talk about social media video and all that jazz. Um, we're kind of interim in the middle of a studio refit, so we're testing out a three-camera setup and hopefully end up with someone a bit posher later on. So we've got one camera, two camera, and that can't see me. Point at that camera, would you? That one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's see how this comes out. And um, We're going to refit the studio so it looks a bit of a mess, but... Um, Happy days, let's crack on. Um, we're going to talk about social media video, the state of social media today. Um, where shall we start? What do you think is the most popular kind of social platform for video at the minute? What's growing? I feel like we're doing an interview. We're not supposed to be doing an interview. It's just a <laughs> casual chat. I think if we, we step back slightly and think about how video was when I got into social media, yeah. the only time you really saw a video was corporate, talking head, yeah. dry, ties. You still see some of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like going back to the millennium. You, you're, seeing, you know, you're seeing less of that, thankfully, but that was the only thing that business owners knew. Yeah. And I think they struggle to understand how video doesn't have to be that anymore. Do you think? It's, I think it's very different, yeah. I think the, the, the social landscape or the way we consume video is very, uh, is very different. We don't really think people... Are, sometimes still trying to make video based on what they think they want to tell people rather than what the people watching the video actually need to get from the video. And so corporate stuff tends to do that because they want to spread their message, which actually just doesn't perform well in the social landscape at all, versus like edu educating or entertaining somebody with general sort of short form social content. And I think that's probably across all of their content, isn't it? Probably. Is they're always thinking of themselves rather than the audience. Yeah. So they're thinking, how can I, in that two-minute video, tell them as much as I can yeah. about what we do, rather than actually, why don't I let our client? Why don't we just tell our client stories, which is a much better. It's. I think you get a way better reaction telling your stories. Exactly what you just said. Telling the stories of your clients and maybe the benefits of what you've done, rather than trying to explain to people what it is that you do. It's the benefits. That's the thing. Yeah. Solve someone's issue. Which is marketing, which is sales, you know, yeah. 101, 101 from way back, yeah, yeah. exactly. But if you can do that in video format, it's much more engaging, it's genuine, it's realistic. People see this, they can tell who you are, and they judge who you are from that. Talking about the platforms, which was something I want to pick up on. When you talk about video, immediately people think YouTube. But yeah. so much more these days, it's actually drifting over onto some of the other real main players. So Facebook are massive on video at the moment. Jim's been saying to us earlier on, Twitter's going to come big on it at the moment. Of course, Instagram, Snapchat, all the main players at the moment are all concentrating on video. It's where it's at the moment. Yeah, all moving towards a video first platform. We were just talking earlier, what we say by the end of next year, 90% of Facebook will be completely, or your feed will be completely filled with video. Well, you only have to look now. You know, every other post is video. You know, I, I hardly ever stop on a story that's not video and read it. Yeah. Unless it's from a really, really interesting and trusted source. And the first thing that you're trying to do is just capture people's attention and video yeah. does that. You know, it won't always be that way. 12 months from now, there'll be so much video on there. <laughs> you know, people are going to have to work particularly hard to capture attention. Yeah. And we've seen people, you know, pretending to tap on the screen and say, you know, stop, listen, stop. stop and listen. Yeah, all of that. <laughs> you know, everybody's still learning how yeah. best to get people's attention, which is what this is all about. Yeah. You know, and they're going to be the winners and they're going to be a lot of losers. But actually, the real losers are people who just, just let it pass them by. Because, you know, I've got people coming to me now you know, in 2016 and saying, we're thinking of going on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see that. I feel a bit snobby laughing at that, but it is funny. It is funny to think that, really? Yeah, it feels like we're having a little bit of a dig at the people who are just trying to catch up, but I'm, like, I'm almost walking away. I know you still love Twitter, but I feel like walking away from Twitter completely. There's like 6,000 followers on there and almost zero interact interaction. I get like a few retweets every month and maybe a few messages, but I'm, I'm not very active there. You anymore. guys aren't active on it. I'm still active on it. The other day, I was going to Topsham to see a prospective client and I got an hour's time. So I went on Twitter and said, right, where can I get a decent coffee with Wi-Fi and Topsham? Immediately, two tweets came back telling me the same cafe to go to. If you use it, if you, you, put, yeah, you get out what like you put in, guys. Yeah. You yeah. guys aren't that active on there. You're <laughs> yeah, moving on and that's fine. Yeah, but yeah. You know, you, I think if you're... At, we, we've been cussing Google Plus all day, yeah. okay? <laughs> but I'm sure people who are active purely on Google Plus are still getting some value from yeah. it. So, you know, it's about reading where the value is, where it is for you, your clients, and yourself yeah, personally. Yeah. But, you know, I want Twitter video to come. Yeah. Because I love Twitter. It still works for me. So, but it is about where is video working the best right now? Let's discuss that, like Twitter video. Like, 
where do you see, what do you see with what's happening now? What's working now? What's not working now? Should we discuss Periscope, that live streams there? What can Twitter do to make video or make a better platform for video? Because you can already upload video direct, a minute's worth of video. I think it's, it's, it was 30 seconds initially. You can I film. It's gone up, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it's definitely it, gone yeah, up. Yeah, it's definitely going yeah. up. But yeah, you used to just be able to film a 30 second video and then upload it. You can now import a video that you've got already yeah. saved. Um, it's, it's difficult to get scalability on Twitter. So if you've got a business where you're trying to connect with people individually or if people are talking to you, what a great personal way to reply to them by recording a 30 second video. It could even be 15 seconds, which takes, yeah. believe it or not, 15 seconds to film. <laughs> you know, so if you're getting a customer service thing, if you're Tesco's and you've got someone sat there who's confident in front of the camera who has the answer, get them to record a Twitter reply via video. I would just be blown away by that. Yeah, I, think, I think it's brilliant. That's personal value in the person than the, uh, the written tweet, I think. Yeah. yeah. You know, Twitter, I got put off Twitter when we start seeing a lot of automation. So yeah. you would connect someone, split second later, get a message saying thank you for following on Twitter. Unfollow. You know it's totally, yeah, Unfollow. totally unauthentic. <laughs> but what you can do I now... I all had a go at that, even I've had yeah, a go Yeah, quite in the early then, days. Then gone, this is brilliant, I don't have to do anything. I can all pay anything. <laughs> oh, hold on a minute, this is a terrible idea. And in, that, the, in the early idea. days, when, tw- you know, I built my business off of Twitter. So in the early days, it was brilliant. And I couldn't <laughs> respond to everybody who was connecting. I'm getting 100 yeah. connections a day, it's too much. Now Twitter's a lot noisier, you know, it's a bit steadier. I think if somebody connects to you, check their bio, make sure they're authentic and there's someone you're, you know, you've got a bit of an allegiance with or an mm. interest, a joint interest, just to quickly connect and then mm. just do a DM video that's personalised. But that happens on Snapchat all the time. Yeah, yeah, of course it does. I get snaps from people all the time saying, thanks for connecting with me. Why aren't we doing it on Twitter as well? You know, yeah. it's just the way we're yeah. evolving. Oh, that's how we do it on that platform. That's how we do it on that platform. Let's take what we're learning there and do that over there as well. Do you value a Twitter, a new Twitter follower any less than you value them like a, a new Snapchat follower or a new Facebook like? I just, I just think it's easier to build a relationship with on Instagram or Snapchat now yeah. Because, you know, that's how our relationship started. That's how our relationship started. Yeah. You're seeing lots of little snippets of that person's life. Yeah. You automatically build a relationship. Mm. This, you know, we've known each other socially for a couple of years. Yeah. First day we met today. <laughs> today. <laughs> and it's not like you're meeting someone for the first time because you already know each other. Yeah. Now, Twitter's not got that mm. at the moment. But I think you don't see a lot of video. If you go down that's... your stream on Twitter, there's not a lot of video going on. That's so if you start point. doing video there now... You can start to get noticed. Yeah, there's still some there's still some opportunity there. It's a real good point. I don't feel like I know hardly any of my Twitter followers at all. Mm. But Snapchat followers I know probably almost every one of them. Um, not all of them, but there aren't very many of them. <laughs> well both of them. <laughs> yeah, I know both of those Twitter followers. <laughs> Snapchat followers. Uh, Instagram as well, I feel like I've got a much better insight yeah. into into the people who follow me and the people who want And I engage a lot more. Yeah. Because there's little stories, I'll just go on and say, Oh brilliant, yeah, uh, yeah, we should do that. Tell me a little bit more. Like you're yeah. engaging with people a lot more on Twitter. There's not a lot of engagement. It's really, really low, yeah. and it doesn't matter about the quality of your content. <laughs> I get loads of, Ma- Matt's on got loads of engagement. Yeah, I think that's because you're putting still a lot of time into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can't do everything all the time. Yeah, it's too much. You've got to pick that one or two channels that are really working well for you. You know, we're in social media, so we've got to be able to use them all effectively yeah. and understand their pros and cons and where you know you're going to get the best leverage. You know, for me, Twitter was brilliant. I, I wouldn't get rid of it because for news, it's just still brilliant. Mm, yeah, and for yeah. local news and quick news, it's amazing. But for generating business, it's just not doing it for me. Let's go back to the first bit where I said, like, um, where do you think video is smashing it? What platforms do you think are really, really winning? Because everyone's moving towards video. Yeah. Facebook's obviously phenomenal, but what else? Well, Facebook included, but... Where, where are you seeing your best results from, from video? Again, you know, we were chatting earlier on and Facebook Live, if I look through my insights over the last month, I did a live video stream from the Honiton show. Went yeah. down there, luckily found a bit of 4G signal, thought, oh, I'll try this out, see how it works. Connected first time, did a 30 to 45 second live stream and it was probably middle of the morning. So very few people saw that live. But because it saves it, leaves it on your platform, yeah. then go back afterwards and it grew and grew and grew. And by far and away at the last month, that was my most popular post. 
So why? Because Facebook favours video wherever everything else. Yeah. Facebook Live, I think it favours that even more than it does Definitely. uploaded video. So it's showing it to more people. And to take the human element of it, it's genuine. You know, I'm not sat there yeah. with it being edited, with makeup and a studio. I'm in a field with my phone, with people walking past way, thinking, you're it. a freak. There's a man talking to his oh. phone. You know, you've got to get over yourself. But yeah, they're all farmers going, oh, he's got a phone. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it was, but it's, it's, Outcast. it's just me, you know, and I, I can't be, what the biggest compliment I've had today or the biggest thing that makes me realize this is working is your good ladies turned around to me and said, I feel like I already know you because she watches Perfect. my snaps. Yeah. And it's that that's the most genuine. So Facebook Live is their kind of version of, of Snapchat. So yeah, I, I think that Facebook is still at or will be for the next 12, 18 months killing it on video, big time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where were we? So yeah, Facebook video still smashing it. Uh, Facebook video ads, absolutely killing it. So yeah. cheap. I'm getting one pence of you still. I know we're talking yeah. autoplay still, so. And then massively engaging. The you know, if I see movement on a, a Facebook video yeah. advert, more often than not, I'll just click it, just to listen to a bit of that yeah. that content. It's still got to be good quality stuff to make you make that next step, yeah. but it's really engaging. I still don't think a lot of businesses quite understand how powerful that kind of video marketing Video marketing on Facebook is so powerful and yeah. so cheap. I think it sounds like we're trying to almost sell video marketing, but I think it's because we kind of totally believe that it's the best content form to get the best results yeah. and so, get the most attention out of people. So maybe we should say, right, how do we create that video? Because I think, again, we had a conversation over lunch saying, actually, a lot of people are going, well, I've never done any video. Yeah. I've never filmed. I'm not a film star. I'm not a TV star. So is it a case of getting over yourself or is it a case of getting some coaching? Yeah. So what I think I think there's I previously thought this was like a generation thing, but I don't think it's I think it's more like of a mindset thing. Well, because really. we're all old farts, you mean? No, because I said it to someone really old and they got offended. <laughs> 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 no, that's not true. <laughs> so <laughs> I did think like that I think the younger generation have no problem picking up their phone whatsoever. Yes. But I think I think we've kind of got used to the idea of picking up your phone and talking to you, whether it's Snapchat or Instagram or, yeah. or a live stream broadcast to, to Facebook. But previously, like an older generation would never have even considered that, but I think they're now picking it up. But I think it, the, the reason I think it's more of a mindset issue is because some people just will not do that. That's just not on their, it's not on their radar to pick up a phone and, and just ad hoc some video or even come to a studio and do this. They're just not going to do that. And then there's kind of this middle ground of people who will do video but it has to be set, structured, polished, yeah, yeah. clean, in a studio, you know, perfect lighting, or they're just not doing it and they won't put themselves out there. So I think there's that three levels, really, of people who will, who will just pick up the phone and live stream, totally confident, whether they're digital natives or not. Someone's just started hoovering. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks, Dart. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah there's those three levels people will just pick up the phone and ad hoc it those people who will do video but have to be kind of convinced set structured scripted professional and then those who are just not on their radar at all and they're just not going to do it so what do we do then for the person that doesn't want to do it and we're here to tell you please do it because it's what's killing it on social how do they Jim get into that how do they pick up their phone and start doing video to, to get the benefit of this marketing at the moment this pipes back to five years ago when I really started to get on the, you know, the local radar for doing social. There is, there is a group of people that just will never get it. And, you know, we can be evangelical about video, <laughs> but we're only evangelical about it because we know it works. And those people will still not get it. So I think there is an audience that just won't get it. Yeah. Perhaps we're looking for someone within their business who does get it. Uh, but often the, you remember the decision makers on the whole are middle-aged white men who haven't grown up using that kind of technology. Yeah, so it's very so alien to them. Yeah. So there is a lot of education to do. There are the ones that just get it straight away and they're the ones we should be hunting down because they're the ones that are, they're just going to go with it. They're going to give it their best effort. Yeah. They're not going to get disheartened at the first little hiccup. They're just going to enjoy it, get into it. And they're the best ones to coach because they're very positive people yeah, generally. Yeah. They want to get involved, they yeah. want to do it. And the others, you know, they will start to realise when the phone stops ringing and the business <laughs> is starting to dry up. And that sounds really arrogant to say that, and it doesn't happen overnight. But I know myself, there are certain people I have bought things from 
because I've seen them on social. Yeah. You know, yeah, the statistics are there, Forrester, whatever you want to do. They all say that people are more likely to buy of people they've seen on social. Yeah. That is often our first interaction. So video is it's very unique in its offering of breaking down, you know, Ellie met you, she felt like she already met you. Now that's no reason why that shouldn't be happening in business. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you know. I went to that business, but I already knew all about you because I'd seen you all over social. Yeah, and it feels and much more comfortable going and having a conversation with that yeah, person. Of course, yeah. We we preached forever and a day, you know, um, like no trust yeah, or no like trust, whatever it is, yeah, and it, it yeah, still happens. Yeah. So if, if someone have if you've broken down that first initial barrier because they've seen you on video first of all, you've got that first part of the sale done. So I think that's a major, major key for and that. Me. It just makes it easier with video, doesn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's much easier. Um, we did like a talk the other day, and I, I just. Trying to explain it. I think it's much easier to get my message across face to face. You get to know who I am, you get to hear my voice, you can see. I think I did a video on it as well, on that Vader challenge that I did. Um, I just think you get to know someone really quick. You've just proved it by video rather than reading their blog posts for three ah. months or their emails or whatever other method of communication you want to read. I think you can get to know someone in, in a few seconds on video, how like, they're going to yeah, be yeah. when you meet them. Yeah. And I don't know about you, when I write, I edit. <laughs> you know, I'll write something, oh, that's rubbish, let's re edit that and make yeah, myself yeah. sound posh. With Snapchat, you know, it's a 10 second snap of me. If I, and I, yeah, and I will quite happily make some mistakes and leave them in there. You can delete it and record again, but it's still pretty much genuine. You there on the spot. Um, my phone's ringing. Excuse me. Oh, hang that's up. terrible. <laughs> Here's a question I get asked quite a lot. So I'm going to ask both of you. Have you got any business from Snapchat? No, 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 not at all. Me I, I, I kind of have a, a reason why I do Snapchat, and that's not, I don't do it for business. I kind of, I'd like to think I was getting some awareness from it, but being there's hardly any followers on there, <laughs> <laughs> I actually do it for confidence building for creating regular video. Great. I pick that phone up almost every day to get used to talking to camera, walking down the street, like walking past someone, like a mum pushing a pram talking to a phone. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Still. Like, I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, and got I think to... that's a good practice. I, you know, I knew you and I'd read your tweets and bits like that, but I got to know you better through Snapchat. Did you? Yeah. yeah that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, I've not brought your services. Yeah, and I've not brought your services. No. But, you know, it's a drive down here. It's not a short, <laughs> you know, short yeah, but bike. Like three, six months down the line, there might be someone who needs some studio video work and you're like, I know that guy. Exactly. And you found me on Snapchat. And I'd never really link that back directly, I don't think. No. Because um, you don't get from, you don't get from A to, to F just like that. You have to I like go through the, this process. I like the idea of actually getting in some practice. Because I don't. That's really, really don't do it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't. So every now and then, I'll, I'll go. I'll quite jokingly, I'll go. Maybe I should give you a social media tip, and then I'll, I will. I'll give a social media tip. But I, generally speaking, I just tell you about my dog walks in the morning, yeah, 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 and about something dog. funny that had just happened to me. I mean, I, you know, I, I, we, we've all done the daily vlogging thing as well. You know, we've given that a go. Yeah. I think there's still we will create those kind of videos. You're doing Nick's World. Yeah. Jim was the longest serving member of the panel right now. Seventy two days on the trot. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard work. I lasted a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you learn so much from doing that. And and I get I still get comments back from it. Yeah. yeah. Why have you stopped vlogging? You know, and, and there are other business people that will say to you, oh, actually, you know, I saw that and you talked about this and you did that. And it's weird when people walk up to you and say, Oh, I loved it when you threw that stuff out of your window. Where'd you see that? On your vlog? Oh, yeah, I remember chucking out last time. Yeah, you just forgot about it for a while. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it just reminded me I'm doing some uh, consultancy work with a, a company that's got several brands under it, sells all over the world. And when I went into that first sales meeting, they turned around and said, oh, I've watched your vlog. And I haven't <laughs> vlogged for six months. There you go. But, you know, they, it obviously gave them confidence yeah. to, to ask me to come in. Because, actually, if you search social media Yeovil, we are a top on Google oh, yeah. Search. Okay. Social media training yoga, social media services yoga, all of that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it works, but that's not the way they found me. It was actually a referral yeah. from someone who had never worked with me, but knew of me and the work I do. So yeah. someone who's never worked with me, referring me, saying, Jim's the best at that, speak to him. They then went and found me online, watched my vlogs, looked at some of my other social. Yeah. The, the, it's, the sales funnel is obvious. Awareness. Bit of convincing online from old content down to making a phone call and having a meeting and then resulting in the sale. It's not rocket science. I wish I worked in you know something like car sales. Yeah. Because I would be Wait, the top salesman. <laughs> I would be all over it. I actually tried to sell a social media and car review package to I won't say it, but it was a, a car garage locally. 
and I was, I, I was just blown away they didn't just rip my arms up straight away I was like we're going to do car reviews definitely without a doubt we're going to say out what cars you've got in stock we're going to take them for a drive and we're going to review all the pros and the cons and I mean, you're going to try and sell these cars you're going to get people into the garage and you're going to use social media and social video to, to talk about the stock that you've actually got what's just come in yeah brilliant what's available what's coming in in two weeks time you're never going to run out of content you've got 250 cars back there oh, you, you would <laughs> that be, are what? constantly changing you do know I used to be a car salesman did you <laughs> Yeah. But you think about these dealerships of 20 different shops yeah. all over the southwest. Honestly, God, give me an iPhone. I think it stands for loads of traditional businesses as well. You could do that. Oh, yeah. I used to run an art that. gallery, so a small art gallery, a picture framing business before social. I think MySpace Times, and I didn't understand that anyway. I was never on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, kind of, I, could, I reckon I could do the same now. You could probably smash that business now with a ton of social, how many different artists do we deal with? We could document the process of them creating their art, do interviews with them, show them how we create frames. However, no one really believed how everything is handmade and how long this takes to create picture frames. I think we just have, have convinced people a bit more of the value of the yeah. product that we're making, introduce them to new artists all the time. We could have killed it. But I hadn't just learned how to use a computer when I was running that gallery. It's funny though, because we can come, we can sit here and come up with lots of ideas for other people's businesses. We do yeah. that naturally, yeah. don't we? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I think that's where the creativity side of thing comes in. Yes, you can tell the enthusiasm here is is immense. Get going with this! Come on, get, all you got to do is pick up this and film. Done, you know. And then I, I mean, I we've been talking about it today. I will film from this. I will edit on this. I will upload to YouTube on this, yeah. and I can upload straight to Facebook from this as well. It doesn't even have to be take the card out, put it in my PC, use an expensive piece of editing network, so yeah, ed- editing cool. software. Yeah. It's a fairly simple process, and it doesn't have to be polished. Unless maybe you're in a you know you're in the professional sector if you're an accountant a solicitor but still why not be the informal solicitor yeah. the approachable solicitor you know there are so many different I'm sure angles. there was an IFA down this region who was really good at vlogging and he used to shoot these videos kind of looking out over cliffs on the south coast and he would talk about oh, yeah. any subject yeah and he was brilliant you know just oh, having that personality on camera yeah and, and, and one knowing of the, knowing your business Snapchat I used to follow a guy who operated a wood yard. <laughs> In <laughs> Connecticut, in the States, I loved his snap and he made yeah. stuff out of wood. I've got no interest. Yeah. But he was brilliant. The videos were good. Yeah, he was brilliant. <laughs> you know who he is, don't you? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I think there's, especially if your lo- your business is local, you, can, you know, Yeovil is a, you know, 40,000 people. Yeah. To be noticed is not particularly difficult. I mean, for the right things. But to be able to put, <laughs> you know, short form content out and get noticed is Should not difficult. Out. So I put out a little video just the other day. I've run it as an ad and it was just to drive people to a video challenge I did to try and get some more traffic to that and opt-ins. And Jim showed me a popping up in an instant article today. I'm talking I've spent four quid. I think I put 25 quid towards it, but I've only spent four quid as of this yeah, morning. Yeah. I don't know how many views are on it, probably a few hundred, not massive. But that was really interesting to make. It took me about 15 minutes. And whoever that is, someone, I think that my phone was going again. About... Um, 15 minutes to make a video compiled of four seconds of video that I just repeated and wrote some text on it. And Jim's here seeing it in an instant article on Facebook popping yeah. up. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. A minimal said, effort. You said about getting, I mean, I, I did a post the other day where I did a video and I promoted it with three pounds. Yeah. It was seen by 297 people. <laughs> it's a penny of you. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. You're not getting that on YouTube. That's pretty much what we're running at as a penny of you, all the promo, all the, all the video ads. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, no, you're not getting that on YouTube at all. No, I think Facebook at the moment is killing it in terms of video. Uh, all right, they record a view differently. Yeah, yeah so YouTube to... because of the monetization, they record a, a view. I think at thirty seconds. Right. And I think Facebook is it three, three. seconds? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically a view. Yeah, is you know, technically is that a view? I, uh, you know, I yeah, I don't care. The fact of the matter is, if I put the same video out on Facebook, I get ten times as many views. Yeah, and actually, if you look. And normally about a third is 10 seconds plus. And they're very different platforms. That ad that I was just talking about, I would never, ever post that to YouTube. It's just, it's just not, not the right thing to no, post no. to YouTube no. at all. But I just want some traffic from Facebook. That's all I'm looking for is get some opt-ins. Yeah, again, no going back to, to if I had a car dealership, I'd be all over Facebook adverts. <laughs> yeah. Someone's phone keeps going. Like <laughs> yeah, I would be all over Facebook adver- yeah, advertising it's because it's cheap. You can localize it. And you can make it very personal. Yep. I remember uh, one of the big insurance companies was putting like 15,000 quid a month through Facebook advertising. Like Swift that, cover. Yeah. Was it? And they were putting it straight out through Facebook advertising, but they were localizing it. Yeah. And they were localizing it down to a town level. 
So each advert would have the town name on the advert. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. I do remember that because it came up with, yeah, it, it, was a, it was an insurance company and it said car insurance Honiton. Yes. How did that happen? It freaked yeah. me out. And I thought, wow, that's really clever yeah. targeting. Yeah. yeah, break down each different individual ad set, yeah. target that. And we're saying it, you know, location. it doesn't necessarily have to get massive views. I'd have to watch it all the way through, but it's being shown to people that I want to see that video. I'm not just putting it on YouTube and hope that people see it. I'm putting it on Facebook. And if I'm going to do an advert, I'm going to target that. If my target audience is women aged 35 to 45 who live in Honiton, that's who I can target it at. I'm not wasting money showing it to other people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's so It's not cheap. last media, is it? You can, it's actually fine-tuned. Like you say, really, really cheap to get that video in front of the right people, not just in front of anybody. Yeah. And if you're getting a penny of you, yeah. you know, you put, you're spending £650 a week advertising with a local rag for a banner at the bottom of the front page. Crazy. Six, you know what I could achieve in terms of views for a video for 650 quid. Yeah. And even when we stop talking about the, the, the one penny views, the autoplay three seconds, when we start to actually value that at the 30 second plus or even the completion rate, it's still ridiculous. Yeah. So I did, I did some of mine at over 30 seconds. I was paying about 16 pence a view for over 30 seconds. I can't remember what it was for the, um, for the complete run, but I was still getting a 19% completion rate on a minute long video. Uh, for, and it's still costing, you know, nothing, certainly under 50 pence. For somebody to spend a minute with me, a minute of attention of somebody else for 50 pence is actually really cheap. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about completion rates of keeping someone's attention for about a minute, and let's call it a minute of someone's attention for 50 pence is still ridiculously cheap value. I don't know anywhere else where you're going to get that sort of value. No, no. Unless you, if I look at where I put my attention in terms of video at the moment, I've got my daily vloggers yeah. who I watch, which is effectively replaced my TV watching. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't think of anything really where I take the time like I used to even 10 years ago where I would sit down on the evening and watch that, you know, like Top Gear or something like yeah. that and I would make sure I was always ready to watch that. I can't think of anything now where I do that. Don't I've got a 13 year old daughter never watches TV. She consumes no. everything off of YouTube. Now, all I do is I watch my three daily vloggers every day. You know, I, I religiously watch them yeah. because they're entertaining. Now, for most businesses, you cannot do that yeah. unless you're working, working in something like tourism. You, know, you can get away with the kind of daily vlogging business. It, yeah. It's just the way it is. And perhaps if you're dealing with like a car, the dealership could definitely get away with daily vlogging. You really want a car dealership? You know what? I'm in the wrong Someone, business. Some car dealership, call Jim. <laughs> Hi, me in now. Social media, ring him. Uh, but otherwise, <laughs> what I want to see is lots of short form, short form honest. All the time. Yeah. And Instagram's great for that. Snapchat's great for that. Facebook Live is great for that. Yeah. And I think the whole live, you know, Snapchat and Instagram are going to really bring more people into being confident about video, I think. Yeah. These little 10 second snips of themselves. There's a certain generate you're never going to convince. Yeah. They're never going to do it. But the people under them are going to be more convincible. And you don't even have to film yourself. You know, I, I, I'm vain enough to stick a camera in front of me and go, hey, chat away. But if I've got product or if I'm a chef or I want to show somebody, you know, I could just say, look, it's me talking in the background, but the camera's going to be facing away. Here's our new car. Let me just show you around the new car. Yeah. Look at this. This is neat. Spoiler. When we turn it on here, the spoiler comes up at the back. You know, that kind of stuff. As long as it's attention grabbing or it solves a problem. You know, have you ever wondered how to crack the perfect egg? This is how I do it. Crack. You know, there's, there's that stuff that you can do. You don't have to film yourself. If you've got yeah. a product... Then that's easier. If it's a service, yeah. it's you know a bit where it collapses hard. though. Go on. Is if you've got no passion about your business because it is so. Well, we should honest. be running that bloody business. It's, it's so honest. Out, then, yeah. You know, if you've been working <laughs> car sales for twenty years and you, you you're just tired of it, you can't do that because it'll just come yeah. through. Yeah. First couple of videos, people are like, that. "Why they can't sell? Yeah, They're not interested." Yeah. You have to love what what you're doing. So if I had a car dealership, I get you know, you've got the young apprentice loves everything about cars. He's the man to show people around that new car. Yeah. You know, it arrives and, you know, you've got to capture that moment. He's got the passion when the first time he's opening it up and he's getting that new it car there, smell. Yeah. And, oh. <laughs> he can see himself driving it. Jim wants yeah. a new car. And I want to work, yeah. Aston Martin, if you're out Free there. Free social media management for a, a car. Anybody saying Aston Martin's up <laughs> But, yeah, it, I, I think, you know, because there's still going to be a stumbling block. People do not want to be in front of camera. And there's a massive generation thing on that, I think. Yeah. Like you say, the younger generation, probably more comfortable. But it's easy to do. But is it easy for it to be compelling enough for me to want to watch it all the yeah, time? Yeah. 
And if it solves a problem, the how-to videos are so simple. Oh. I still go on YouTube with my car and go, right, how do I change a light bulb? It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. But there's two or three blokes out there that can show me how to do that. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. I love those blokes. Thank you very much. That was one of my first ideas for doing video was the Haynes manual in video format. Wow. <laughs> I was like, this, this, this is a big operation. They're only just up the road. They're on the way to your place, <laughs> yeah, aren't they? They are. The very local to Haynes That Bob was quite yeah. a long time ago when my dad was like reading the book looking like, how do you do that? Oh, this picture's not the same as the car. Yeah. I was like, we need to video this. <laughs> <laughs> we're only ago. really there now, aren't we? You know, yeah. change the blade on my lawnmower. I haven't got the manual. The manual's gone to the tip years ago. <laughs> we so came out of the box and went in the bin. Yeah, so I did it straight, straight to YouTube on my phone, stood in the garden. Oh, that's how you do it easy. That's yeah. the one I need. I'll nip and go and get that. In fact, I think I ordered it straight off the phone. It arrived. I fitted it dead easy. Now, there's a still a lot to, uh, of that kind of capability around. You know, if it, Going back to the car dealership, I really apologise now. <laughs> You're even doing your checks on that car. Yeah. You know, that, that is evergreen content. That's true. That is sat on your it? website for every car that you sell, how to do your washer water, how to do yeah. your clutch, you know, how to do everything There's on it. There's great value in that content. Of course there is, and it just keeps going. Yeah. And that doesn't have to come from car manufacturers. A little car dealership doing that oh, would be absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. And they, I think those people, you bought that car from them that year, you learned, you kept in touch with them for the next five years watching their videos. They did first port a call when you go on and go buy a new car. Of course. And they want to go back. Yeah. You trust well, those people. The person that's making those videos, they become, in a really tiny way, a bit of a celebrity. Yeah. Oh, I've seen them on the videos. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about changing my car. You know, it, it's. They'll a, go in the car dealership to see to that see person. To see who it is. They will. You, we've, we've all experienced that where people have seen us on camera. Oh, yeah. I saw you on the camera. The businesses have a massive risk there, don't they? So if they've got that superstar yeah. that does all that work <laughs> and then they get poached by another dealership yeah. or another business. Or he starts asking they, for more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they take they take the audience with them. This is true. Wow. That's yeah, down that's to them paying them the right money though, isn't that's it? That's something to consider. They could take the audience with them. I mean, I guess it would be the business's channels, yeah, yeah, of uh, course. business content, yeah, yeah. but the celebrity, they might celebrity. <laughs> more they might well follow. But it's like we were saying earlier, you've already built a relationship with that person yeah. before you've even gone to that dealership or that business. You already know that person like you know them personally. So the conversation is much easier. Yeah. The trust is already built up. Yeah. And you know, when you, you know, we all see car salesmen as a bit slimy and a bit, you know, they're, they're trying to. <laughs> I wasn't joking, I did it for eight years. <laughs> eight years. <laughs> but no, that is an opinion that people have, isn't it? You know, when you, no. go, <laughs> when you go to a car showroom, they're on you. True. They're there, they're on you. One of your clients is a double glazing firm, aren't they? <laughs> Might well be. I think worse of them than I do car salesmen. Right, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to prove it. That's, I'm going I'm to prove it works. <laughs> I think we've established video is really important in your social media uh, strategy. It's so important. And, it, and do you know what? And it doesn't have to be, it shouldn't be straight. It should be either fun, educational, but you know, the, the videos that we make off the cuff we try and be funny, or at least yeah. we're lighthearted. You walk into work every day. I get to find out what's coming up in your day, yeah, and you know, sometimes it's snaps. Yeah, sometimes it's it's right, straight. Then. Sometimes it's quite funny. You know, it's as long as it's human and relatable. A good rant. That's yeah, what I like. I do like a rant every yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a ranter. I like it when you go off on one. <laughs> <laughs> but do you? Do you rant? Occasionally. I, don't, I, I find myself not doing it. <laughs> I, see, I'm, I'm too. I, I think I'm a bit too safe. Yeah. Sometimes. I would get, I have to be careful, I get a bit sweary. You see, I videoed him earlier on and I said something about his beard and I edited that out <laughs> of the video out. that I'm going to put on later on. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, oh, I might upset a few people. Actually, sometimes I don't think it goes amiss to upset somebody. Yeah, it's all right. I had a little rant about Facebook Live the other day, as much as I said that, I, you know, as much as I'm about to spend a ridiculous amount of money building a live stream multi cam setup studio, I'm still quite happy to go onto Facebook and moan that people are using. <laughs> Facebook Live, not incorrectly, but they're not interesting enough to hold my attention. Yeah, yeah. And so I think, yes, just because you've got the ability to do something, probably doesn't mean necessarily you have to. mean you should. <laughs> <laughs> I've got happy to say that on Facebook, because actually I sit there and I watch them and I think, you can't even hold me for the first minute. You know, you need to really do something to but get again, my attention. But again, don't you think it's very early days in terms of life? It is, yeah. Yeah. And I, I do just wonder whether I've got the cynical social media guys head on yeah, sometime got, being a bit social media snobby yeah people yeah. will learn because people stop watching you're young but you will learn <laughs> but yeah I think it's good yeah maybe just a bit snobby about it yeah, yeah it's yeah, difficult I think so. my, my mate was you, you, the I, good thing about I included a we in that then. yeah <laughs> guilty the good thing about Facebook Live is you get a notification 
So yeah. if you go live, yeah. that's great because it tells all of your audience, oh, by the way, they've gone live. So yeah. that's really, really that's valuable. phenomenal for you as the exactly. person who's broadcasting. My yeah. mate went live the other day on his boat going down the River Tamar. And it was quite interesting because it's my friend and he was showing me someone's down the galley cooking some bacon and Brilliant. there's someone up on the top of the deck and it was just getting dark. And it's my friend Dan and I was quite interested in watching it. But if you're doing a, an outside event, if you're even at a market and you went live on Facebook Live and said, look, we're at the market today and you know it's going to tell people immediately. If you're at an event or you know, if you've got an open day or something like that, that's where it can really, really come into its own yeah. big time. I think it's hard for some people to hold an audience on their own. I struggle. Yeah, uh, it's difficult. I think we you can get someone so I've a guest. I've done a great deal of it. I put it on, I was a bit like, I don't know what to say. Well, I'm not going to yeah, do this until I'm ready. Listen, before you go live, just have a middle, a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah, yeah. Know what, how you're going to start, what's the content and how you're going to get out. Most importantly, how you're going to get out. Otherwise it's like, yeah, and then uh, you go, uh, and you stop and you go, right, where's the off button? The amount of times I've done that and you look yeah, at right, yeah. Numpty doing it. <laughs> a little right. bit of preparation doesn't go, you know, I think. It needs some bullet points, don't you? Exactly. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. And I think for a lot of people starting off, just don't do it alone, do it with someone. Yeah, so you've got someone shout. to bounce off. That's a good shout. Uh, yeah, we start. Tips. You know, we've all got a. There is no manual for Facebook Live. No. There isn't any of the experts out there telling us how to do it because it's so new. And I think live streaming in general, you know, because don't forget, we've got YouTube live streaming as well. Yeah. We've got Facebook live streaming, we've got Periscope, and there's other apps out there as well that people might not know about. So yeah. there is no manual yet. It's very, very new. Play with it. And it's about learning and testing things and trying things. I don't know what the ideal length of a, a live video is. Nor do I. Nobody knows because it's so new. The Apple event was, I watched one, I didn't watch it all, but it was streaming for, someone was streaming for two hours. They streamed the Apple event. But you watched on it like all, Wirecast they? or something. Yeah, yeah. Brought the Apple event out, did their commentary on the bottom of it, pulled in some highlights, discussed a few things. It ran for two hours. I jumped in and out of that because it kept popping up on my feed. Yeah. It was like, it must have jumped because it was constant. It was live. So just obviously want to keep reminding that it's there. And obviously I've liked their page. It keep popping up. And so every now and then I just jumped in and watched another yeah. 10 minutes of it. Yeah, yeah. That would never happen with any other form of video content. No I'd go way. back and catch up with it later on. And that's at an event. On any other platform. No. Nah. When would that happen? Yeah. BBC News now. I capture it all on live. It pops up, BBC yeah. is going live now, and I'll watch it if, if it's relevant. Mm. If not, if it's something I want to see, I know it's going to be sat there on the Facebook page, I will watch it later. Yeah. So the way we consume video is changing. You know, there's the very, very short form stuff, and that's your Snapchat and your Instagram stories. Yeah. You know, that is 10, se that. 10 second maximum, 20 of those a day perhaps. It's, you know, it's five minutes worth of video, and then you're moving on to your more medium kind of, you know, two to 10 minute type stuff, a bit of uh, live stuff. Yeah. And then you're talk, moving on to your more formulate stuff, the, the work you do, which is, you know, 12 one minute packages or yeah. Yeah. You know, six five minute packages. Or Three whatever. camera setups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I can't see the third camera. But there's a, there's, there is a level yeah, there that is. everybody can get involved. Yeah. And as you get more confident and more, and, and understand the value of that video, you then see that actually, yeah, there's a production cost to doing that high yeah, high quality it. video, but the benefit is 100 times that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you run a business, buy a smartphone. Simple uh, as. Simple. Yeah, I mean, it's the go-to device for all of your stuff now, isn't it? It is. I spend far more, even though I'm in the office, I'm still, I've got a 27-inch iMac in front of me and I'm on my phone. Is <laughs> that just quicker sometimes, just to, yeah, it is. just to quickly jump on it? Yeah. I think uh, one of the interesting things that I talked about at this talk the other day was uh, the different types of content that people think they should be creating versus the content we talked about earlier versus the content that we think and believe that they should be creating. And whilst I think like cinematic promotional videos to tell your story is a great thing to do, like homepage of your, I think that sits perfectly. Homepage of your website, featured video on Facebook, featured Perfect. video on YouTube. When they first come to your channel, that's yeah. the introduction piece. Like a trailer. Yeah. yeah. But that's a one-off piece. And the discussion was that there's only so many times somebody wants to watch that. Once they've watched it, um, that's it. That's high, unless it's brilliant, they're highly unlikely to come back and watch it again. Um, I think your next point of call after that is how do you create a consistent flow of video that's probably more than the phone stuff that you talk to camera or explain. Yeah. How do you create something, not necessarily studio, but planned, that's, um, that's a bit more structured? Yeah. And I think there's more value in that social content there than the promotion of it. Ultimately, over 6, 12, 24 months, there's more value in creating 12 pieces or 24 pieces of content and publishing every two weeks. Yeah. 
and spend three grand on that than there is on spending three grand on that promotional video. As much as I think there's value in that, we bloody sell them. Yeah. I think you should have one. <laughs> Nick, there's both services. <laughs> <laughs> I won't float. Put my own website on it. <laughs> um, I just think there's even if you t- if you ask me which one you would spend you should spend your three grand on I would say spend it on social content. Yeah. Still, you ble- you're, you're getting more bang for your buck well, without a doubt. <laughs> without a doubt, I think so. You know, I love. You know, we've got a local gym, Nose and Wheel. You know, they've got a really beautiful promotional video done. Yeah. Fantastic, but it is a one hit deal. Once you've seen it, I've probably seen it three or four times now. Yeah. But I know the content, and I know all about what they've got there at the yeah. gym, the services they offer. Now I want to see underneath the skin. Yeah. I want to see day to day what's going on. Training videos. And it's such an easy Me, thing to do. You, you don't need massive advice. production. No. You can very much do it in the gym. You know, you've got several personal trainers in there that should all be creating content Constantly. straight out of that one yeah. channel, whichever channel they choose they to do. They do 10, 12 hour shifts, some of these instructors. They're in there back to back, long shifts running the gym all day long. <laughs> There's like client after client after client. There's a man who knows. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and there's, well, there's an untold amount of content to be created. And we spoke there. earlier, didn't we, about the body coach, Joe Wicks. Yeah. And he got that, you know, two, three years ago when he right started time. off. You know, he saw Instagram. He, he understood it straight away. Started doing his lean in 15, 15 second recipes. Yeah. You know, he understood what he's doing. You know, all right, he's, you know, one in a million where, you know, he's just exploded and he's worldwide, yeah. you know, reputation now. But on a local level, Anybody can achieve that on a local level. Yeah, you, you know, you don't, you're not going to be the next Joe. Wicks. You're not looking to be Joe next. No. You're looking to maybe bring in some new uh, personal training clients, get some new members at the gym. Exactly. That's totally achievable yeah. through social video. 100. So we're wrapped up. 45 minutes worth of video so far. So wow. Wrap it up. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> it's a bit, fair bit of editing for James to do. <laughs> His face. But again, it's not one used video, is it? Because there's lots. We're going to little... chop this up. We're going to repurpose it. We're going to have graphics, minis. We'll oh, I want some, some money out of that. <laughs> but there's loads, and, and also where you're going to put that. Yeah. You know, you're the long version. Probably going to sit on YouTube. It'd be lovely. Yeah. Full one. Little snippets. Instagram. Perhaps going on Instagram and on Facebook and then taking people to the long form version. Yeah. So much you can do with that video content. And for a business, just take, take an hour out of their day to do something like this. Yeah. Well, this is true. You got literally, I know we got to show you a setup. You don't need this to do this. You've no. got 45 minutes worth of video and there's a ton of mint, there's a ton of extra content we can create out of this. Things that everyone here has said as mini videos. We create graphics, sound bites, and screenshots, they? sound bites. Yeah. yeah. Turn it into a podcast, export this audio, whack it up on SoundCloud or wherever you want to host your audio podcast. Lips in, yeah. <laughs> Lips in. <laughs> um, yeah, let's wrap it up then, I reckon. Um, loads of tips and advice, and I think we've sold the idea of social video. And we could all help <laughs> you out creating social video. <laughs> links under the video. Links under wherever you find this, there'll be some links. Give yourself a plug. Right, which camera we got? <laughs> You've got that camera. Go. <laughs> uh, MrMattYoung.co.uk. Uh, making social media work. Oh, that's you... proper radio. Oh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> you'll never lose that. Jim Rowe, Blooming Social Media, based in the Southwest. Yeah, you should be on my channel, but in case you're on one of their <laughs> channels, nickellison.net. You can find about me there. Thanks. Cool. Good Thank chat you to you guys. For letting us come into your wonderful studio. Cool. Good to chat. See you later. <laughs>